If you're wanting to book a 2021 cruise, I'm going to show you which cruises you should be avoiding so that you don't book a bad cruise or worse still, lose your cruise completely. I know a lot of people are worried about booking cruises for 2021. I have booked two for 2021. There's definitely good deals out there, but you need to know which ones are good and which ones to avoid. Normally I rave about repositioning cruises and I still think they're fantastic, but I don't think you should be booking a repositioning cruise for at least the start of 2021. A repositioning cruise is basically a cruise where you start and you end in different places. It's a bit more difficult because you have to sort out getting to the ports. And for that reason, they can be really, really cheap. To get a bargain cruise, I always recommend repositioning cruises. Having said that though, I don't recommend that people book repositioning cruises for 2021 because these type of cruises are very likely to be cancelled. They're likely to be cancelled because there's just no reason for these repositioning routes. So one very common repositioning route is a transatlantic cruises. Cruises will do one season on one side of the Atlantic and then they'll take a transatlantic cruise to the other side, do a season and then come back. At the moment, there isn't a need for that. So a lot of people are booked on transatlantic cruises, for example, coming from the US to the UK, and the ship at the moment hasn't even gone over to the US. So there's a high chance that those cruises are gonna be canceled. A cruise line isn't gonna to want to move its ships just to reposition them back. Repositioning cruises happen for every cruise line. They happen all over the world, but they do just tend to fill in the gaps where the cruise line needs to move the ships between different places. If the cruise line doesn't need to do that, repositioning cruises are gonna be canceled. Another thing that you need to think about when you book a repositioning cruise is you're probably gonna need some sort of flights. It's very rare that you'd be able to do a repositioning cruise without either flying to the beginning or flying home at the end. And booking flights leads us in nicely actually to the next point. Number two, avoid cruises that have a lot of traveling. I know it's very tempting to travel to the other side of the world. I would love to go to Australia right now, but if you can book your 2021 cruises from a home port, stay close to home. There's so many reasons why that makes more sense. By booking a cruise from a home port, you're just eliminating some of the things that could go wrong. If you're not booking hotels, if you're not booking flights, those things can't be canceled. Worst case scenario, you might book a cruise that's halfway across the world. The cruise is going ahead, but the airline cancels your cruise. That's very, very stressful and no one wants to be in that situation. It isn't just an issue of logistics either. Every cruise in 2021 is going to require you to have had a coronavirus test before you can get on that cruise. Lots of cruise lines are testing people for coronavirus at the port. And if you fly halfway around the world, test positive for coronavirus, that is a much bigger problem than if you've just driven to your home port, tested positive, and you can go home and quarantine. The cruise line will try and help you as much as they can if you do test positive before boarding a cruise. They won't allow you to board, but if you've bought travel insurance with that cruise line, they'll usually put you up in a hotel and sort out your transport home. If you don't have travel insurance with the cruise line or the cruise line doesn't offer that, you could be on your own in a foreign country. So it's so much easier to cruise from a home port in 2021 if you can. Leading on from that, if you can't get insurance for a cruise, do not go on that cruise. I've been saying this for years, but it's more important now than ever. I've got links in the description to where I recommend you get your travel insurance from, but whatever you do, get your travel insurance. You would be surprised how many amazing places you can cruise to from your home port. I'm from the UK and I know a lot of us here don't like to cruise from the UK because the weather isn't fantastic, but there's so many great options cruising from the UK. If you're from the US, there's so many amazing cruises you can go on from the US. You can still drive and go on a cruise from the US, but yeah, just do it. Just do it. Just do it, Hudson. The next one is difficult for me because I do this all of the time, but I'm gonna say don't book a cruise because you want to go on that specific ship. At the moment, it's not clear if the ship that you've booked is actually gonna be sailing. A lot of cruise lines are having to move their ships around because their ships are in the wrong places and not all of them are gonna start up at the same time. If you're somebody like me who really likes to cruise from the cruise ship, I know that this can be hard to hear, but if you have booked a Royal Caribbean cruise, you kind of have to be prepared that they may change that for a different ship. If that happens, you can usually get a refund, you can usually move, there's other options that you can do, but just be aware that your cruise may be changed for a different cruise ship. So I would recommend in 2021, don't book a cruise because you want to go on that specific ship. I know that's difficult, but I just don't want you to be disappointed further down the line. 
If we're thinking about cruise ships, it may be an idea to avoid booking the oldest cruise ship in any company's fleet. I have done this though, I've booked the oldest P&O cruise ship, P&O Aurora, and I'm really hoping that they don't sell her before the time I cruise on her. We've had so many cruise ships sold in 2020, and the majority of them have been the oldest cruise ships in the fleet, so maybe avoid those. I hate to say it, but maybe, maybe. Similar to the not booking for a specific ship, I would say don't book a specific cruise because it is a themed cruise. I've taken one themed cruise, it was a 90s themed cruise and it was so much fun. But in 2021, we don't really know how they're gonna be able to do those themed cruises. The 90s cruise I took was basically a festival and there's no way you could have that many people crowded around the pool listening to Five or Bewitched. That just couldn't happen in 2021. Some themed cruise companies have actually gone into administration. Festivals at sea no longer exists. They did some 80s parties, some Jane McDonald's cruises, and they don't exist anymore. So you might not be able to book themed cruises anyway. The next type of cruise that I would recommend that you don't book for 2021 is a back-to-back -back cruise where you do a cruise, you get off and you get back on that same day and you do another cruise. Back-to-back -back cruises can be amazing, especially if the two itineraries are different. But in 2021, you're gonna require a coronavirus test to go on a cruise. And how are you gonna get that test between the first cruise and the second cruise? is questionable. The CDC has talked about back-to-back -back cruises because they're requiring coronavirus tests to cruise, and I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of cruise lines in 2021 stop people from getting back on the cruise once they've got off. A good alternative to this would be instead of doing two week-long cruises, just book one two-week-long cruise. We call that a fortnight here in the UK. I'm not sure that the rest of the world does call it a fortnight, but book a cruise that is a fortnight long, and then you don't have the risk of only being able to do part of it. It may be difficult for you to book longer cruises in 2021. The CDC has said that cruises out of America should be limited to seven days. At the moment, the rest of the world isn't saying that, and I don't know what's going to happen by the end of 2021. But if a longer cruise is for sale, definitely book the longer cruise as opposed to the back-to-back -back cruises. I would hope that the cruise line would let you know ahead of time if you had booked a back-to-back -back cruise and that wasn't going to be possible but I just find it so much easier if you can avoid booking back-to-back -back cruises just book longer cruises for 2021. No brainer. I'm going to be a bit controversial here and say that you should not be booking last minute cruises for 2021. I know there are some amazing deals that are in the very short term but if that cruise line isn't currently sailing you're basically just taking out a loan with the cruise line. You're basically giving your money to the cruise line and there's a very high chance that it's going to be cancelled. If you're somebody like me who knows that you want to cruise, you can just keep moving your cruise money forward and that's not a problem. But if you're somebody who needs the money, don't book a cruise in the short term because it's going to take you a while after that's cancelled to get your money back. It isn't abnormal for cruise lines to take three months to give you your money back. So you may see this amazing cruise that's in two weeks time and it's still for sale. But by the time you get your money back, you're talking three months into the future. So just think about that. And I would very strongly suggest don't book last minute cruises for 2021, unless of course you can see that that cruise line is sailing and those sailings are actually happening. If that's the case, go for it. It's the same as any other year you have nothing really to lose. It's important to note too that just because you can physically see a cruise on a cruise line's website, that doesn't mean that that cruise is gonna go ahead. What the cruise lines have been doing is they've been canceling in chunks. They've just been continually moving forward the cancellation dates and they do appear to be online for a long time before they get canceled. So don't assume that because you can see the cruise and because you can book the cruise, that that cruise is gonna actually happen because it might not happen. Cruise lines don't cancel all of their cruises because they want people to cruise. Of course, it makes sense that they're not going to cancel every single cruise. They've also got other things to worry about, like the stock prices of their cruise lines. If a cruise line came out and it cancelled a year's worth of cruises right now, that would cause havoc with their stock prices. And they are a business at the end of the day. They have to think about their reputation. And that does, unfortunately for us, mean that cruise lines keep cancelling in little chunks. If you're ready to learn everything there is to learn about the cruise industry, join us in the Emma Cruises Cruise Academy. We have a course called How to Cruise for Less, and that's gonna teach you how to cruise really cheaply so that you can cruise more often, and we're gonna all deserve multiple cruises in 2021. I'm sure of it. Check out the link in the description for that and watch this video next.